Hey y'all, what's going on? It's Amy again with the Bargain Mama and you are going to see my mess behind me. You still have not gotten an idea of my craft room because every time I get it done, I start crafting again. This is the basket I put everything into. So yeah, anyways, you, what you're about to see is my Christmas tree folded book. So if you watched one of my previous ones, I did a pumpkin cut book. So I cut the whole book and did all that stuff. This one right here, I just folded the pages. Whoopsie. So this is one book. And again, the, the DIY will follow. So it's one book that I divided in half, 30 pages and 30 pages. You can do whatever you want. Two of my pages started coming off of the spine. So I just took them off because you can't even tell. So it's just kind of a matter of what you want. And then you'll see in the video, I glued them together and then I painted the edges. And then I believe at that point is when I kind of stopped because I had no idea. I'm trying to get, let this still dry. I had no idea of what I was going to do beyond that point. So what I did is I took these little gems and for me, um, super glue worked way better than hot glue because you have to put them on a very, very thin place like so I did paint the edges and then I put some glitter on there for the green and then sorry I put super glued this up there just now and it doesn't want to stay right this second but anyways these right here so these oh, it took some patience to get those on because again you're gluing them on a very very thin piece of book so I did do that I thought about putting a bottom on it I did not, but you could definitely, I said in one of the previous videos, put like a box down here and I have one right here. Hold on one second. I'm sorry. So you could definitely put like a box on the bottom and hold on. Sorry. And this one right here just happens to be painted red. But like I said, you could put a box on the bottom right here and this could be like your Christmas tree. You could put anything you want in the bottom of the box. I mean, it would still, it's a cute little base. I mean, it's kind, it's pretty cute. So, and you could decoupage this or mod podge it however you want it or just leave it red. But so this is how you could do it. Again, I just left mine without a base. So yes, this is what I did. And then at the top right here is just the snowflake decorations from the Dollar Tree. And right here where the hole is for like your to hold it on your tree. I just glued it into the bottom down here and I just added a little bit more sparkle because there wasn't enough sparkle for me. So if you can see, I just put a little bit more sparkle, hot glued it in the center and you can see it does not like that. So I'll probably have to glue it again. But anyways, this is my final project. So again, the pumpkin was a cut one and this one is just folding pages. So super easy. Your fingers do get cramped. Trust me. Sorry, my hand is shaking, but your fingers will get cramped, but I am in love with my little Christmas tree. Again, I've never done this, you guys. So if you are a first timer, trust me, if I can do it, you can do it. So go ahead and try to follow along with my DIY. If mine is way too confusing, I would just Google it, Pinterest it, whatever you have to do. But this I just was in love with. I was absolutely in love with this. So anyways, guys, here is my DIY for my folded Christmas tree. I hope that you enjoy it and I hope that you're all having an amazing day. I'll talk to you later. Bye, guys. Okay, so the first thing that you want to do is just find any book. Now, the reason that this book is already cut up is it's a SpongeBob book. And I did put some of the items from this into my son's photo album that I made him. So, unfortunately, I can't show you, but you all know how to take a cover off of a book. And I believe, I think it's easier to use a paperback on this version, but whatever you want. So then you're just gonna count out 30 pages. So if you have page numbers, that's great. But with what what I did is since I had taken some of the pages out, I actually had to sit here and individually count 30 pages. Because like I said, I had taken some of the pages out. Now remember, like this is gonna say 67, 68. So you're gonna actually want 60. Like if you go from 67, oh man, <laughs> let's just look. I don't know. So you're actually going to want 60, which is actually 127. So, wait, am I right? 25, 26. Okay, whatever. It's 30. I counted it. But, like I said, you want 60 because they're front and back. But eh, if your book is only like 67, 68, then you only want 30. I hope I explained that right. So, 
I already, and then, so you're gonna count one set of 30, and then you're gonna count a second set of 30. So I'm not gonna lie, I already did it to make sure that it was going to work because we all know that most of my projects are fails. So I already took this one and counted it 30 and folded it. So on this one, I had the page laying to my left and then I just took it, I folded it down this way. I'm gonna show you how I folded it once I turn it over. But anyways, on the first set, like I said, this one, I had the spine of the book going to the left. On the second one, you want the spine of the book going to the right, okay? So you just want the spine on a different side each time. So you want two sets of 30 and then the spine on a different side each time. Then you're just gonna take your paper Hold on, because this I glue or whatever is going to, I feel like, mess up my whole thing. Because it's not going to fold right. So, so we're going to just take this. If you have ever folded a paper airplane, you are golden in this project. So, if you saw my pumpkin one, that was a book cutting. This is a book folding, which I have never done. So, we are going to attempt it. But like I said, I did do the other one. And I did keep a paper towel here a little while ago to keep wetting my fingers because these pages, I, my fingers are just dry and stuff, but so that it would be easier to maneuver. So your fingers are gonna get very tired. I just happen to have a drink stir because if you've seen my videos, my bar sits right behind me. So let me tell you, I did not use this on the other one and my arms are tired, my fingers hurt. So you're gonna fold it like that. And then the next thing you're gonna fold it again. So let me just show you. So when I was folding it, I was kind of holding down this second one so it didn't go too far. But let me show you what we're gonna do here. And you wanna be careful that you don't like pull too much so that these pages don't come apart like mine are. So then you just want to kind of make sure that this is at a tip up here again. And that this side that's already folded goes directly down the side here, okay? We're gonna get our handy dandy drink stir. I mean, you could use anything. I could use my scissors too. And then we are, so now we just folded this down. So we have, like I said, one page. The other one, I have my spine on the left. This time I have my spine on the right. We're gonna fold this down here perfectly to kind of make almost like a, a sailboat or a paper hat. And then we're going to take it again and just fold it so that this side is folded flush with the spine. And now you say, well, we have all this extra at the bottom, right? So you can choose if you would like to fold it up like this so that it's flush down here at the bottom. You can do that or you can choose to cut it off. I opted to cut it off on the other one, so obviously I'm gonna cut it off on this one. And I just kind of looked, eyed it, and made sure that it was even with the other pages because that just makes sense, right? Like we want it even. So, okay. It was much easier when I wasn't trying to do it on camera. But anyways, so we are just going to, like I said, make sure it's flush with the other pages. And we're just gonna do that. You can always go back and fix it. Okay, so there's one. Let's do a couple more. Okay, so again, be very careful so that your spine, you don't just rip your pages out. So then we are gonna do this second one. Let me make sure I'm in camera. So again, we're gonna make sure that that's at the top. I'm not gonna use my folder thing this time, but you can press it down with whatever you want. So here we have our first fold. And then, oops, sorry, I didn't mean to hit you guys. And then it does get a little bit harder at this point because maybe it's just harder for me, but oh, I, oh, I keep hitting you guys. I'm so sorry. Um, so I just kind of did that at, when I did my other one. So I just kind of made the, the tip first and then kind of made sure that the rest of my paper aligned and then did it like this. So now we have the two folds. So to be honest, I also didn't cut the bottoms. 
until it was all the way done so that I could cut like three or four at a time because it's just kind of silly to pick up the scissors, cut, put them down, pick up, I don't know. Like I said, I'm always trying to find ways to conserve energy and stuff. So we'll do a couple more. So again, we are just going to fold it like this. Um, and again, my spine is now facing right, whereas the first time it faced left. If you want to make it face right the first time and left the second time, I don't care. Just make sure that it faces two different directions. So we have that. And now again, we are going to fold it in. And again, I kind of started, this is where like the wet on your fingers comes into play because the pages are dry. So this is, again, I fold, I pushed my tip down up there and then aligned the rest of my page like this. Okay. So we got one fold here. I'm not going to do the whole thing with you guys, but I just want to do a couple because it definitely took me a second. So there is, like I said, our first one right there. And then we hit our second one and we are just going to make sure that that's at a point and then align the rest of this with the seam and then fold. So, and then again, I waited till the end, but I took a couple of them together like this and kind of used like my first page as a guide. This was harder on the side. I can definitely tell you that for me, and you can see, I don't know if it's, I'm gonna have to do it this way. I don't know if it's because I'm left-handed, I don't know. But this one is definitely harder for me to do this way. So then I'm just gonna take this and I am just going to cut down there so that they're all even. So now I have a couple pages done. And again, there is 30 pages in this bundle. And then there is 30 pages in our second bundle. This is what my first one looks like. I think it's beautiful. These pages keep coming out. To be honest, I think I'm just going to pull them out because I'm sure nobody's going to count and make sure that there's 30. It's just to make it look more full. And to me, it's already looking full, so I'm not going to pull them out yet. But once I get it all put together, I'm sure I'm going to end up pulling these ones out. But I will show you. So I'm going to just continue to fold my book on the right side, and I will be right back to show you guys what it looks like. So I did just want to show you all that, okay, so on the one where I had my seam going to the left, I felt like it was easy at the beginning and it started getting much harder at the end when I was trying to hold back the book pages, or even towards the middle when I was holding back the book pages. And at the beginning of this video, you're going to notice that I was severely struggling. Okay, first of all, I was doing really good until I turned the camera back on. But you'll notice that I was like severely struggling on trying to fold the pages and stuff. But I have to tell you, so again, the one on the left was much easier at the beginning to do the folds and then started becoming harder towards the middle. This one right here was much harder at the beginning. And now I feel like it is definitely much easier to do these folds. Like I'm just kind of moving that along. I'm not trying to push it back so that I don't rip the seam. I am just sliding the top half under that page, just making sure you can see. Folding it down, and then again, just folding this one. So again, I think it is much easier towards the middle of this one versus the other one. So just let me know if you guys have done it and if you guys had any problems. I don't know, honestly, if it's because I'm left-handed or if that's just because I'm new, I have no idea. So anyways, I just wanted to show because I was like, oh wow, like I feel like this is definitely, okay, I swear I was not having this hard of a time before I turned the camera on. Like I think my camera sets me up for failure. But anyways, I just wanted to show you that I think it's much easier now that I have started them. So we'll be back again. Okay, so I just wanted to show you I'm almost done, but sometimes I like when people show me because when I start to have problems, I'm like, well, how did they do this? So again, like this is kind of a different fold that I'm going to do now because I just want to make sure. 
So when I get back here, it's, I don't want to just rip it back because I don't want to rip the seam. So I just wanted to show you that I am, first of all, water is your best friend right now to try to keep your fingers like, you know, moist or whatever. So anyways, I kind of tucked it under right there. And then let's see here. And then again, I just kind of see how I'm holding it with my right hand and then just kind of making sure it keeps aligning and then goes down right there. So I'm going to show you one more time. So because these pages are kind of, you know, they're getting in the way and I don't want them to be like all square at the top. I am just, okay, this every time I turn the camera on. So I am just kind of, like I said, tucking it under there so that they are getting just as much of a point as the rest of them, but I'm not pulling back too much on this. And then I am just doing the tip right here and then kind of going down from there. And then again, kind of making sure that it's up and under the tip so that my top of my Christmas tree is not square. So we're just gonna kind of see how I'm kind of tucking it under right there. And then I'm guiding the rest down. And then I'm doing the fold. So I just wanted to show you, actually, we only have a couple more pages. So, so again, you're going up and under, am I gonna keep hitting the camera? I'm sorry if I do. So again, we are going up and under to make sure that my top of my Christmas tree is not square. And then we're just gonna kind of push it under here again. So again, I'm just kind of lining it up right here. And then I'm doing the tip. You can't, let me see if I, oh, well, there's no way I'll be able to turn it on, I'm sorry. So anyways, and then just line it down. And there we go. So we have one page left. Oh, I'm lying. We have two pages left. So the last two on the other one were very hard for me also. So yeah. Anyways, I'm just kind of maneuvering it again. So it's underneath. And then just, there we go. So again, it is kind of, it gets kind of difficult because you definitely want to make sure that the tip of your paper is making a tip and it's not making a square as much as you can. So I'm pushing down right up here again, but again, I'm trying not to get like pull stuff apart too much because this spine is very weak. So our last page here, like I said, the other one, the last two were the hardest for me also. So we are just going to kind of bring it in. Let's see, make sure that, okay, make sure that the top is at a tip and that this is lined up. There we go, lined up, just do that. And now, let's see, I'm just making sure I'm in here again. Um, and again, now I am just kind of pushing these other ones over because I am afraid that if I push right here, I'm gonna rip this back page off. So, all right guys. So we are all folded, as you can see, and these are the ones that we have cut right here, and these are the ones that we have not. So again, I'm just going to take like this one and push these other ones out of the way, and then I'm just going to try to cut even with that as much as I can, and I'm just going to keep going like that. Excuse me, I'm sorry. So, I have been looking through the book folding tour tutorials, and can I just say that this by far was the easiest. Like, I am definitely, after I do this, willing to try some of the other ones, but yeah, they look pretty hard. So, and I did also want to point out, so I know like for me, my kids play in sports a lot. And I have so many sports jerseys that I'm just like, what in the heck do I do with those? Like, there's so many. So I'm, we're going to give them to somebody to make a big quilt out of them so that, you know, we can save them forever and they're not just in a box where nobody can see. So I was thinking, like, you know, sometimes books, like, there's just a certain book that just really means a lot to, like, you and your kids or you and your family. And maybe it was, like, your favorite when you were younger. And... 
you know, I mean, it just kind of sits on the shelf or whatever. But I mean, you could, and I mean, some people are like, why would I ever want to cut up my, like my favorite book? But I mean, just saying that you wanted to give your kids like a Christmas present or something, and you wanted to do something like handmade. I mean, you could definitely take that book and make one of these at it and they would have it every single year to be able to put out, even though they could have it on their bookshelf every year, but they would have it every single year to kind of like a memoir kind of thing, you know? So, all right, this is our second, well, the pages are obviously coming out. So what actually I did on the other one is I did once, like I was done, I kind of went back and just made sure as much as I could that these ends were very folded so that they would sit down correctly. Just be careful you don't like rip your pages or anything. But I just went back and just kind of made sure that our creases were good so that our Christmas tree would come out perfect. I saw this one, I think it's dog paws. That's another thing, I mean, say like somebody, maybe like their, I don't know, maybe their dog passed away or something, and I don't know, make them like a dog paw book in memory, and it, like, and at, and at like on the front of it, you put their dog's picture. The dog paw book is extremely hard. I have not even attempted to try that one yet. So yeah, this was definitely the simplest that I found out of all of them. This one right here, I do feel like I messed up on. So I'm just going back and kind of folding it a little bit more. I mean, that's how easy it is. So we have that done. I have my handy dandy trash bag. I always keep like a bag right here so that when I'm all the way done, I just throw it in the way so that, yeah, I don't have to pick all and do like 10 trips to the trash can. So now I am just going to use my glue tape. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm losing my mind. And we're just gonna glue them together. So I'm gonna show you how we're gonna do that. All right, so I do have some glitter here. So how I plan, let me just move you guys a little bit. So how I plan on doing mine, and again, this may turn out horribly, I have no idea. But I wanted to do like a red and green kind of thing to the edges. Hold on, I'm trying to get my glue out. So I just wanted to do like a red and green on the edges, just like the normal Christmas colors, just to kind of see how it turns out. I do know that no matter what, I want to do a pink one later because I just love pink. And it's Oh, I must knock something over, and I think it would be amazing. But for right now, I'm just doing plain old red and green. So I decided instead of putting glue on the edges or Mod Podge, let me push this up a little bit. I'm sorry, guys. Let me hold on. Okay, so instead of putting like glue on the edges or Mod Podge, I have decided I am going to put just red paints and then hope that that sticks again. I don't know if it's going to. So let's just start with our red paint here. I don't know if you guys can see, and I don't even know. So I'm just going little by little. And then I have opted to just kind of stick it in the glitter. I have no idea, guys. So we'll see what happens. So there's green. Oh, that's a whole lot of green glitter going on. Okay. So keep going down. It looks like I'm going to have to do the edges kind of on their own with glitter because it does not. I think I'm hitting you guys every time. Anyways, so keep on going with your paint. So I guess I should have told you. You see, I just folded it all together. Oh, well, there you go. I got it everywhere. But I just kind of folded my book outwards like this. And some of these don't, some of these pages don't have glitter, which is fine because I'm just trying to get and so I'm just trying to get some on here so then at the end I'll kind of see mm, that didn't look too good and then I'll probably sprinkle some glitter on if I want in places where I don't think there was enough so or wipe some off in places I think there was too much I don't know so let's just keep going here I'm only going to do the one in front of the camera so let's see here now I'm sitting here just thinking about the pink one I want to do. Like, I just am excited. 
So let's see what we got here. Okay, so you wanna obviously get all the way down to the bottom because if you're gonna put glitter, you wanna make sure that it goes everywhere. So now we're just going to tap it all in here. Just making sure I'm in the camera. Oh yeah, this is my Dollar Tree plate, guys. So then I'm just gonna tap on the back to get the excess glitter off. And now I wanna start opening it because I do not want the pages to stick together. So you just wanna make sure like that one right there was gonna stick. Actually, I have to say, I'm pretty excited as to how it came out. Like I really like, so when it's together, you're kind of like, eh, I don't know. But when it comes out, I'm probably gonna have to put a little bit more on this page, but I'm going to wait until I'm like all done to finish it up a little bit. I was just kind of caking, taking some of the caking off the top there. But anyway, so this is how this side came out and I am ecstatic because I've never done this. And yeah, I think it looks beautiful. So I'm gonna do the other one off camera and then we, oh, actually, why? Why, right? Like, might as well do the other one right now and then we'll, we'll let them both dry. So I did end up just so you know, taking those two pages off that were sticking out and it then put them together, like the two sides together to see if they were gonna work out and it looked fine. So if you have a problem where like a couple of your pages at the end just totally, hold on. I, so if at the end, like you're just like, oh man, like these are gonna come off. like. Those are what you're using for your support, like your glue system. So I, if you, they're gonna come off, take them off because like a, that's like kind of like the scene to your book right now. So the last thing that you want is for them to come off and then like your whole thing is ruined. Just take the couple off. Like nobody is going to go through and be like, excuse me, I only see 57 pages in here and it's supposed to have 60. Yeah, they're not gonna do that. And if they do, they have too much time on their hands. I can promise you that. So, yeah, we're just, like I said, I'm just doing the paint. You could absolutely do any color. Like, as I'm sitting here doing this, I'm just thinking like, oh my gosh, like, how pretty. Like I said, doing the pink with maybe like a silver on top or even just pink on top. And then doing Sorry, I gotta move this around a little. And then I was like, oh, like blue and silver. Oh my gosh, that would be beautiful. Like, so, and you could have done green paints with red glitter. You know, I mean, when you finish it, you'll see kind of which one stands out the most or whatever. So, like I said, I am excited to try all the different colors. And I'm really excited to do the pink and now I'm excited to do the blue. Like I didn't know when I started this project, I wasn't sure what to expect and what was gonna come out. But like I said, now that like I'm into it and I'm seeing how it looks, like I just want to go to Goodwill and buy all kinds of books and do this because it's just, I just love how it's coming out. Oh, okay, I thought I just painted my hand. So, okay, I'm just again. Just gonna go like this. And then I have to think like, what do I want as the topper? Because the fun thing, I really wanna do like, kind of like, cause I mean, everyone decorates their Christmas trees in different ways, right? So how fun would it be to do like a snowman, one of these, but like, looks like a Christmas tree, but it's a snowman. And then you do it in like all blue. And then, Oh, I don't, that definitely doesn't have enough glitter. You do it in all blue and then have a snowman hat on top. Ah, that would be so cute. So cute. And if you, okay, so now I'm really thinking. So what if you had, like, the, the shoes from Dollar Tree that they have right now? Yes. So... If you had the shoes from Dollar Tree, you could put these on little shoe, like you could put the tree on the shoes and it could be a snowman. How cute is that? So here is our, our thing. So when it's together, I'm like, eh, I don't know if I like it. But then like I said, when it separates, ooh, I really just like like how different everything is. So we are just going to let these dry and then we're gonna glue them and then technically, we're done and these are our beautiful Christmas trees but of course I can't leave anything alone so I have to decorate my Christmas trees so I am going to bring you back with that okay so here 
is our two dried books. So you could totally 100% like put this against something, just like a piece of wood or something, and then put a beautiful background back there, like a Christmas background, which I am thinking about maybe in the future doing that, because I think that would be beautiful, like, I mean, up against any, like I said, piece of wood or something. And then, I mean, I only have like the flat things from Dollar Tree, so that wouldn't work. But I mean, just like, if you were to put it up against something and then you could just like decoupage some napkin or something on the back, it would be beautiful. But that's not what I'm gonna do. But, and then you would have two different ones that you could use. Hold on, I think for some reason my camera keeps falling. Okay, so what we're going to do though is we are going to make this one full tree. So, and there is glitter everywhere. So you definitely want to put like Mod Podge or something on after this. So here we go. We're just, so how we're going to get these to go together. Oh, there is a whole lot of glitter mess going on guys. So we are just, so this is just my runner that I get from Dollar General. If you guys have seen it, I think it's like a dollar. I love it. I swear by it. I think I sell them out of it every single time I go in there because I love it. So I am just, I'm making sure you guys can still see me. I am, ah, my finger's stuck. See guys, this is why. So let's see where we're at here. So we obviously you could probably use like, what am I thinking? Okay, why do I even have this in the way? That's what I'm talking about, guys. So, okay. You could definitely use some sort of like Eileen's glue or something like that if you wanted to. But I'm not, obviously, you can see that. So, I'm, the problem is, is it does not want to stick to this paper because it's that weird, I don't know, kind of paper. So what I'm going to do, because obviously I'm smart enough to know that if I put this on here, I'm going to stick it to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to see, okay, so if I put on this side, it's going to stick to that side. So now I want to put the tape on this side. And again, we're going to Mod Podge this in just a minute because... Yeah, that's a lot of glitter coming off. So, I'm just putting, like I said, some on here. And I may still put like a dab of glue at the top just to make sure that they do stay together at the top because like if the top of my Christmas tree falls apart, what do I have left, you know? So, here we go. Uh, now my fingers are all stuck again what is the saying do as I say not as I do because oh gosh I'm a mess in crafting so now we are going to take these two pieces and I'm just going to take this first two pages just realized I was not in frame and I'm just going to kind of first make sure that my top is lined up because that would be bad if it wasn't. And then, uh -oh. so then we're just going to kind of line, there we go. So now those pages are lined up and done, right? So now we have it on this page. So now we are just going to take this one, glue or whatever those together. And then I do have my Eileen's glue. So I am going to, like I said, just kind of glue the top right here to make sure that it stays together. And then I'm going to Mod Podge the sides because I'm using all of my glitter. And, oh, yeah. So I'm gonna do those things and I'll be right back to show you our beautiful Christmas tree. Okay, so we have our little Christmas tree here. And I tried to glue it at the top, but then I was like, well, right now let's wait and see what we're going to put at the top. So I just wanted to give you guys a couple of options. I did have, which I'm not going to do this time, but you totally could. So I keep hitting you. I'm so sorry. So this, you could totally put this on top of here and put like paint this and do whatever you want. And 
I was thinking of painting it and maybe getting one of the larger trays and putting something that looked like Christmas trees in the bottom of it. I'm sorry presents in the bottom of it and doing that. You could decoupage this, you could do whatever you want. I'm just going to leave my little fella as a Christmas tree, but I can't just leave him as a Christmas tree with no decorations, like I said. So I thought of a couple of things. First, I thought that I was going to put, so I got this Santa hat for 25 cents this year, and I just poked a hole in the bottom of him, which I can use it for anything, but I have decided that that is not what I want, like that. And so we're not going to go with that option. So then our next one is, let me grab some of this stuff out. So you could also put, we have these little ornaments from the Dollar Tree. They have such cute ones right now. And let me tell you, our store does not have any of them. But I got these, I guess I got these this year, but there's other ones that I would want way better. So then I was like, hmm, you could totally, if you were into that red truck thing, trying to put them in the middle here. So these two come together at a certain point, obviously up here. So just kind of pull it apart like that. And you could 100% like put this as the topper on your tree, which now that I'm looking at it, looks very, very cute. So that actually might be what I do because... Yeah, I hadn't tried it yet, but that actually looks really cute, except for all the fact that there's all that glue and stuff showing. So, but you could do that. And what I actually was thinking about, which I'm, I don't know if I'm going to do now, is I had these little things from, I think Michael's or something. I got them for like 10 cents last year. And so I was just going to put some gems around the edges and then put this as the star at the top of the tree, with this, which is also very, very beautiful. So I honestly have not decided what I'm going to do yet, but these are all the different options you have. So I have those, and then I do have this from the Dollar Tree, which is just their garland that they always have. And so, sorry, if you hear the scratching, my dog wants out, or in, in, he's outside. So I was thinking about like putting garland around here. I'm just winding it around. And that actually might look kind of cute. I'm not sure. And some embellishments. So I am just going to finish up my little tree and then I will come back and I will show you guys how I decided to embellish it. 